What's up everybody, Alex here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, this is gonna be a recent finds, buys, uh, acquisitions video. I'm terrible at these, and what I mean by terrible is that I am terrible at keeping up to date. I have the utmost respect and appreciation for all of you out there who do your May CD finds or May vinyl finds and, and you're up to date with it and it's every like month or broken up in the weeks. Is I just love it. I do one like every like six months, I feel like, and I want to get better at it because it gets to a point where I have too much stuff to make one video. So uh, all that to say, this is going to be a video of May pickups and then probably a lot of April pickups too and even some before that. It's just recent stuff. But these are all used items. So if you want to call them vinyl finds, whatever you want to do, Sweet, love that. Um, and then I'll do another video of any new stuff that I got uh, here after this. So these are all used records that I have found and purchased over the last, I don't know, well, let's just say two months. Um, the way I have this sorted out, because we got some different viewers who are into some different things, um, we got a little bit of jazz. I'm gonna show the jazz first. It's only a couple of them. So, you know, all my best buddies who love jazz and, you know, really want to get into it, like Gary and Steve and, and all the jazz cats really zone in on that. I'm going to get through a couple of those jazz records first. Then I'm going to go into a number of records that I got uh, that were that were three bucks each. So each of the records was $3. Um, some of them I was very familiar with. Other ones I had no idea even existed. And so those were all just $3 bangers that I was just super excited to get. I'll show those. Then what you would kind of call like your more just awesome standard vinyl finds, what have you, um, that I'm really excited for. And then last, I actually have four what I'm going to call grails. I mean, everybody has sort of a def different definition of grail, but for me, these were all albums that, I would say three of them are grails. One of them is just really cool. Um, but these were actually albums that I had on my Discogs want list for a while. And uh, they were always just too expensive to, to do anything with. But I was able to find them at a much better price, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to show those as well to close out the video. So uh, so this video is not 20 minutes long. Uh, we'll jump into it again with the jazz finds. Now, here's what's I think um, pretty awesome. So I'll get to my grail at the end, but that was a record that I bought off Discogs and I got it from, uh, I think Record Safari actually out in LA, had one of my grail items for a really discounted price and they threw in uh, like a filler record for padding. A lot of places will do that, right? They just throw in some junk for like, the, you know, to protect the sleeve and all that kind of stuff. But actually I like looked at this and I was like, this isn't really junk. Like I like this. And I pulled out the record. It looked a little bit scratched, but I gave it a good clean, put it on, played really well, especially for a record that's been around, gosh, for 65 years almost. And that is Pyramid from 1960 from the Modern Jazz Quartet. Great collective, but this collective I love. Percy Heath, Connie Kay, uh, John Lewis, and then Milt Jackson on Vibes. I'm a big uh, Milt Jackson fan, big Percy Heath fan. And so this was cool. I mean, this was a free record that they just put in there. It's like padding. Uh, these were on Atlantic. And uh, yeah, I mean, for a free record, of course, like I was expecting it to be trash or just nothing in there, but I'll take it. Absolutely free record, Pyramid, Modern Jazz, uh, Quartet. Anything from this uh, artist, I love even latter day stuff that isn't, you know, expensive at all. This was really cheap. Maybe I think I paid seven or eight bucks for it. I see it all the time because I just love the cover. Um, but it was finally at a price that I was really good with. And that is uh, Affinity from Bill Evans. But this is with Toots Thielmans, who's a Belgian harmonica player. You see that harmonica up there too. So very cool album cover um here at the piano this again later career i think this was 79 that this came out but much like so much other bill evans stuff just beautiful laid back sunday morning type stuff so yeah this is uh affinity uh on warner brothers from bill evans these next two records were a dollar they're a dollar their sleeves are not in great shape records play pretty well for me they're not overly valuable records anyway but for a dollar i dug them uh there are certain jazz artists that i just trust pretty much anything that they do. And uh, Keith Jarrett is one of those. So um, this is Buy a Blue? Be a Blue? Buy a Blue? Um, Keith Jarrett, this came out in 77 on that sort of ABC Impulse label sort of transition um, going on. But yeah, uh, Dewey Redmond, Charlie Hayden, Paul, um, Motayan, Motion, 
crushed it. Yeah, just great. Anything Keith Jarrett, I love. And for a dollar, banger. And I love these. I know people feel a certain type of way about this. I've had people tell me, they're like, Alex, I don't like how you buy records with messed up sleeves. And I was like, good, I do not care. I particularly love, first of all, it was a dollar. Secondly, it was a white label promo, which it's just stupid collector bullshit that doesn't really matter. Thirdly, I am a sucker for some of those records that have the radio stations com like completely sharpied all over the cover. And that's what we have with Chick Corea's Secret Agent um, here, uh, courtesy of WBFO, which I believe is a station out of Buffalo, New York. But uh, yeah, white label. Uh, yeah, this was a later 70s. It's a, it's a decent record. I just don't, um, truthfully, I'll be honest with you, I don't really do the jazz vocal thing. Not really my thing. I love more classic female jazz vocal, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, all that type of stuff. I struggle though with like fusion vocals. It's why I kind of struggle with the first Return of Forever record and some of the later Return of Forever records and then some of Chick Corea's type stuff. So the vocal tracks, I'm not a huge fan of, but you know what, for a buck, it's great. Terrible album cover. I love the radio station stuff and some promo and it was a dollar, so he snagged it. Okay, jazz is over. Let's go into some bangers. These were all $3. $3, again, some of them I'm familiar with, other ones uh, not so much. I had no idea that Andy Summers and Robert Fripp did a record together in 1982. Of course, Andy Summers coming from the police and then Robert Fripp, who still at this time was doing that 80s era uh, King Crimson stuff. I didn't know that they did an album together. And it's what you would expect. I mean, it's a guitar album, right? Like this is a guitar centric, some Frippertronic stuff going on, Andy's ripping. Uh, I, I loved this. I thought this was great and just cool. I had no idea they did a record together. Um, and yeah, three bucks. Killed it. Loved it. These next two are kind of cool. I had heard of this band a lot, never had listened to anything they did, um, but was really kind of um, impressed to find them for so cheap. First one here, this goes back to 1969, the debut from Fat Mattress, who sort of became... Um, I, I, I don't want to say known, but a lot of people when they say Fat Mattress, is they're going to say exactly what I want to say. This was the band that Noel Redding um, helped found while he was still with the Jimi Hendrix Experience. And so this is the first record that he is all over guitar, vocals, all that good stuff. And then this is actually the follow-up uh, Fat Mattress 2. It's a great cover. Um, so he's on some of these tracks, but he was no longer in the band at this point. He had sort of left. This came out in 1970. What's cool about this though, again, these were both three bucks. This record is from 1970. It is still sealed. Still sealed. I mean, again, it's not like this is a super popular, rare, expensive record to begin with, but it was three bucks and it's still sealed. I think that's awesome. I'll unseal it for sure, um, but just cool, right? Love it. Um, this was a band that, uh, I really, they released three albums. You could call it kind of more two and a half. Uh, I think this might be their best one, although people would kind of say otherwise, but it's kind of the band that has become known for the band before Todd Rudgren went solo and started doing Utopia stuff. And that is Naz. This is their second record and Naz Naz, um, cool record. It's psychedelic. It's poppy. It's garagey. It's sort of proggy. It's all over the place. It's interesting hearing some of the stuff and hearing, oh, I can see where he's going to go with that either as like a solo artist or the stuff that he was going to do, um, with his, uh, utopia project. But, uh, yeah, this is Naz Naz. This was 69. I think this came out 68, 69. Um, yeah, cheap again, three bucks on this one. The, uh, the cover is not in the best shape, but the disc plays great. And uh, yeah, Naz Naz, great stuff. This one's for my boy, Sam St. John. I can't believe I never owned anything from Argent. And I saw this and it was a promo white label and it had the timing strip and it's just a compilation Argent anthology. So, you know, you get, you, get the, you get the bangers, right? Of course it opens with Hold Your Head Up, which everybody knows it closes on side B with sort of what seems to be a live performance of time of the season from his time with the zombies. What I did not know, and I think it's Russ Ballard, does that sound right? That he had written, God gave rock and roll to you for Argent. I did not know that. I think I was familiar with that song maybe from Kiss. Uh, but yeah, when that started playing, I was like, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, uh, really cool. Again, promo copy and uh, three bucks. Uh, for the prog nerds out there, uh, this is sort of one of those second or third tier Prog bands, they've sort of been labeled as like a poor man's ELP, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. 
Of course, me just saying that, you know who I'm talking about. It's uh, the German band Triumvirate. And this is their, arguably their best, Illusions on a Double Dimple. Look at that fucking mouse. What's up? Y'all got an A G? Okay, so, uh, yeah, Illusions on a Double Dimple. I, I think it's unfair to just say that they're the poor man's ELP. Their, their keyboard is just out of control. I mean, he's amazing. This is a damn good record. I think it's really just uh, the two tracks. I think it's... Um, Pretty much track side one is one track, side two is another track. But if you're a fan of Prague and you do not know about Triumvirate, stuff's usually pretty cheap. They're from Germany. All that. This was on Harvest, another one of those cool Harvest fan, uh, artists. So yeah, Illusions on a Double Dimple from Triumvirate. Here's an interesting one. This is why you take some risks. Again, this was three bucks. Sleeve was meh, a little bit beat up, I guess. Uh, I looked at the, the vinyl and there were some like spots on it. And I was like, Ew, that just doesn't look good. But I was kind of, you know, feeling a bit. I was like, I can't tell if those are actually going to be surface noises or not. Um, and again, it was three bucks. And that's Freewheel and Bob Dylan. Now, this is a 1970 reissue. So it's not on a 2i. It's more on like the red and orange Columbia 360 label. But I had a much later reissue of it. I think that... Um, we love vinyl or we are vinyl or whoever does those reissues. Um, but I wanted something closer to original and I was really pleased with how this sounded again for three bucks. So, uh, this actually has now become my player copy and I'm going to get uh, rid of that later reissue, but, um, yeah, freewheeling great stuff, obviously blown in the wind. The first time he did girl from North country, um, masters of war, all great stuff. His best. Mm. Who knows? Uh, shout out to Mike over at MGK Boston. He responded to a short I made. Well, this was, the short was made months ago, I feel like, of me flipping through all my Jethro Tall collections. And he commented, he's like, that's a, quite a collection. Are you a fan of Mick Abrams? And for, for the people in the know, Mick Abrams was the guitarist on the first Jethro Tall record this was. And then he wanted to go a more bluesier route. Ian Anderson did not. And so he left um, and formed Bloodwind Pig and put out this record. Um, what is this? Her head rings out. Yeah, I mean, this is cool. This is great. Hard rock, blues rock, amazing stuff. Big fan of this. Again, this is still that $3 sort of thing. Plays great on uh, the classic tan or brown A&M label. What a cover. Absolutely ridiculous there. And uh, yeah, just good old fashioned kind of British blues, hard rock type stuff. So that's it for the $3 bangers. Now we're moving on to just some good old fashioned classic rock type stuff. Um, that I didn't have in my collection that I'm excited for. As I said in a number of videos, I got the chance to see Uriah Heap live several weeks ago um, with Steve from All the Worlds of Stage and Gary from Physical Format Rock and Roll. And what's funny, I have all of those first uh, Uriah Heap records all the way up to, I guess, Return to Fantasy. Um, I did not have Uriah Heap live though, and I felt I had to get that in preparation for uh, the show. So what an amazing uh, live record this is, right in their prime here. Uh, I think this is on maybe Sweet Freedom or Wonder World Tour. I, mean, I think it was Sweet Freedom Tour. Um, but yeah, just amazing, an amazing set list. Great live band, so much energy, heavy, just great stuff. So yeah, you're right, Heap Live. Uh, another double live album that I didn't even know existed. This has been a band that I've been getting into recently. I've been uh, just loving their artsy approach, uh, their their sense of humor, their musicianship, just everything about them I've really been digging. And so it almost just fell right, right in my lap. And this is What Do You Want From Alive from The Tubes. Um, this was 77 maybe, 78. Um, this was awesome. I mean, this is there's so much energy. It's funny, it's comedic, it's artsy. They do some wild covers on here. Great musicianship. I mean, this is art, to me, this is art rock at its best. There's definitely progressive elements to this. I'm not going to say that the tubes are prog, although their first record definitely is. But at this point, it's so artsy. Um, I, I put them in like the same ish vein of the Talking Heads, uh, just maybe a little less um, flamboyant in that sense. But I'm really digging the tubes. They would go a much popular route later. Um, but yeah, this is prime time tube stuff right here. Um, and this is cool. This is also a white label promo. And I think this was like six or seven bucks. So. Really pumped to get that. Uh, how about some more British blues, actually, with the next couple I'm going to show. Um, I picked this up at a local, I guess, um, fair, local record fair. There's a Memorial Day record 
sort of mini show going on at one of the local stores, about six or seven vendors, and I picked this up, and it is Living the Blues from Canned Heat. This is an original uh, UK pressing, so double record, um, I forget the label, Liberty, it's on Liberty. Um, but yeah, an original first UK press, which is kind of cool. A uh, little bit of surface noise, but you know what? It's from like, whatever, 68 or something. I'm cool with that. Plus it's just blues, so you want to kind of feel a little bit dirty anyway, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, this is good stuff. Canned heat, living the blues. Um, good stuff. Right or wrong with some British blues. This record never got released in the U.S., of course, without later reissues, but it was never originally released in the US and I'd always been looking for it. And it's the only one I was missing from the early stuff. And that is Mr. Wonderful from Fleetwood Mac. Their second record still in that Peter Green area era. Of course, you know, the album cover doesn't help at all. They're, they got a lot of really trash album covers. So I get it, but uh, yeah, just good old fashioned, early bluesy Peter Green Fleetwood Mac stuff. Um, this was the music on vinyl reissue from several years ago. So uh, really happy to pick it up. It sounds great. Even if it's digital, it sounds great. Good stuff. Um, this was fascinating. Uh, some of you, well, a lot of you probably know, great hard rock band, UFO. A lot of people look at Phenomenon as their debut. It's not. That was just the first record that Michael Schenker was on that really changed their sound and became more of like a hard rock band. Before that, they had two records where they were like a... They're a space rock band, and I don't think those records are looked in very high regard. They become pretty valuable, but it's just a completely different sounding band, even if they had the same members going on. But I found this, and that was this was kind of cool. It's, this is I love this type of stuff. This is called Come On Everybody UFO. This looks like a boot. It's not. This is a German press, German reissue from 1981 of kind of a mixture of the first two records. And so... Um, it, it, it's a comp, I guess, of some things on the first two records, but uh, you got Come On Everybody, Shake It About, Who Do You Love, and uh, on side one. And side two is Star Storm, which I think, I mean, that's kind of the big epic spacey. It's 19 minutes long. Um, let's talk about that logo and how bad that is, right? Like everything about this is just awful. Um, but I, I mean, it's interesting, right? Like, very different band. Of course, I prefer my Michael Schenker era UFO with Obsession and Lights Out and all that kind of stuff. But this is kind of cool, too, just as like a little collectible piece. So, yeah, pretty pumped about this. Uh, again, made in Germany uh, from 1981 and kind of a comp of the first two records. Now we get into more kind of grail stuff. Again, like I said, three grails. Um, you know, when I say grail, I just mean that these are not $500 records or $10,000 records by any means. A lot of them are probably worth closer to 100 or so that I was able to get for significantly less than that that I'm excited about. So um, the first one, and this is, isn't necessarily a grail, although it's very cool and I'm really glad I picked it up and it was at a great price. And this is the debut from Italian prog rock band PFM, or more formally known as... Um, Premiata, Forneria, Marconi, uh, PFM. So this is the, the debut, um, Storia di un minuto. Story of the minute? I don't know. Italians out there? Whatever. They call this Pasta Prague. Italian Prague, PFM are the kings of it. Uh, Le Ormi, some other ones are great too. But uh, this is the debut, 1973 Italian press on uh, Numero Uno. Uh, label, which is super cool. This was pretty heavily discounted. The the cover it does have a little bit of water damage, especially on those already really thin and flappy European covers. And so uh, that's the issue with it. But the strong VG Plus record for me, as you all know, that, that's what I'm about. So yeah, this is amazing Italian Prague, sung in Italian. They would later use English um, in a few years to be more influential to the rest of the European and the US market. But honestly, their Italian language Prague is the best. So this is that debut, an original Italian pressing. Um, super pumped to have this, this is awesome. Uh, this next one is some newer Prague for sure. And this has been on my want list since the beginning. And it is the first record from uh, what was an actual grand experiment from the Neil Morse band. I love that cover by the way. How awesome is that cover? Yeah, so Neil Morse Band, Neil Morse, Mike Portnoy, Bill Hubauer, Eric Gillette, Randy George. 
Uh, super group, progressive rock super group. Of course, it's Neil Morris. It's his band, but it really is more of a collective. And this was their first album making music together um, called Grand Experiment. I love, I've listened to this record so many times. I love this record. If you're unfamiliar with the Neil Morris band, I think this is actually a perfect place to start because it's a single LP. The rest of the records are long. They're conceptual. It's a lot to digest. This one is not... To me, I think the song that really defines them perfectly is The Call. It's what opens up this record. It's 10 minutes long, but this record closes on side two with the 26 minute and 42 second song, Alive Again, the big epic, which is amazing. So, so pumped to get this. It was a great price. This is the record that I got that came with that Modern Jazz Quartet album. And uh, yeah, I could not be happier to have this. So excited, such a great record. More Prague. Actually, all these all these grails are all just Prague. I'll be sure to put that in there. So Prague people are probably, you know, creaming your shorts a little bit. Maybe other people are probably like, fuck this guy. But, mm. ah, oh, that's good. I had been missing this record. I wanted an original, um, and I was just not able to find it anywhere. Again, it was on the want list. Thought about pulling the trigger a couple times, but I saw this at that record show for about $20, $30 less than what I've seen it at the lowest on Discogs. And this is the second album from great UK Canterbury progressive rock band, Caravan. If I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over you. Hmm. This is a great album. I mean, in the land of pink and gray or gray and pink, I think a lot of people will cite as their best uh, I think a lot of that, I, I would not argue with it. I also think a lot of that is because of the big epic, Nine Feet Underground. This to me is just as strong, if not stronger. It's so quirky, it's jazzy, it's so British sounding. It's great Canterbury progressive rock stuff. And so I'm so happy to have this in original, um, US at least, on, on the Blue London label. So uh, yeah, Caravan, if I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over you. And lastly, another grail for me, also a Canterbury band, Progressive Rock, and that is at least a U.S. original of the debut from Soft Machine when they were known as The Soft Machine. Not only an original on ABC Probe, but an original that is uncensored. Um, there's a little bit of nudity on these, and then this is kind of actually cool. Of course, going back to 1968, this was a very cool sort of uh, thing here with this wheel to come out you got some different things going on there this turns of course it's it's very cool but this is psyche this is poppy this is proggy um slightly jazzy but nowhere near as jazzy as they would get um later on so yeah i just could not be more excited again to get this for a great price that i was looking at this usually goes for like a hundred bucks i think i got it for about 40 so um still a lot of money obviously but i mean for for the value of it for me I loved it. So, um, yeah, there you go, people. Thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for watching. I'll have another video out about any new stuff that I've gotten. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, the, the finds the last couple months or whatever. And, uh, yeah, appreciate you all sticking around. We'll see you on the next one. Take care now. Cheers and bye.